Luis Ortiz versus Charles Martin, January 1st. Luis Ortiz came back to earn the TKO over the former heavyweight title holder Charles Martin in Hollywood, Florida. Hurt. Trying to stay on his feet. Ortiz staggered Martin with an overhand left, forcing him unable to counter. Body attack by Ortiz. Oh, and he's showing us how to do it right here. It's, oh, he's gone. King Kong quickly follows up with a flurry and scores the knockdown, leaving Martin with his glove tied up in the ropes. As a result, Martin was not able to beat the 10 count, and that prompted the referee to waive the fight off. Tyson Fury versus Dylan White, April 23rd. With 10 seconds left in the sixth round, Fury lands a left jab followed by a right uppercut which put White sprawling to the canvas with a numb look. Just over a minute to go in Although White was able to beat the count and rise to his feet, the referee deemed it unsafe for him to continue, halting the fight after two minutes, 59 seconds of the sixth round, declaring Fury the winner by six round technical knockout. Christian Thun versus Amron Sands, March 25th. Christopher Thun of Germany defeats Amron Sands of Florida in a heavyweight battle on March 25th. Thun overpowered Sands with wild and quick thrust, the chase sending the opponent back into the corner, followed by a series of devastating punches to his head. The Florida boxer's dull and painful appearance caused the referee to stop the fight in the last seconds of the first round. Bakhudir Jalilov and Jack Mulawai, June 10th. Jalilov dazed Mulawai with a counter left, putting the challenger into misery, then blasted him with one more wild uppercut. Mulawai landed flat on his back with a sickening thud, and referee Estevez instantly waves it off and summons medical assistance in the final moments of the eighth round. Kenzie Morrison versus Hasim Rahman Jr., April 29th. In the fifth round, Morrison struggled to time the swinging left hook and kept marauding forward, continuing to chase his opponent. The uppercut out here, he just... A wild right hand stab immediately followed to Rahman's head. Morrison landed against whatever rock he threw down. Oh, oh, hurt, 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 hurt. hurt. Not long after, Morrison lands two rapid fire hooks to the face, leaving his opponent exhausted and collapsed on the floor. Morrison's done. A minute and a half. Okay. Wow. Is Arzalan's back Makhmadov versus Marus Wok on February 19th. Makhmadov successfully defends his WBC, NABF, and WBA, NABA title against challenger Wok in Montreal, Canada by technical knockout. In the sixth round, Makhmadov unleashed a barrage of big shots, including a right hand to the jaw that put Walk down. Walk got up, but he stayed in serious trouble, and the referee waves off the fight. Jose Larduet versus Dusan Valatek, February 19th. Larduet, in an aggressive spirit, comes forward, delivers a short left hook to the head, causing Velatek to duck his head in defense. Right. Right after that, Larduet's three consecutive wild punches go straight to Velatek. 
Jack's face, leaving him exhausted and unable to counter. The referee then waves the game off in the eighth round. Is Stephen Shaw versus Joey Da Weshko. This is January 29th. Laying hands on DeVeco. After battering De Weshko during the sixth round, a confident Shaw let his hands go and he had his way with the fading De Weshko again in the eighth round. In the training camp leading up to the Olympics, the way he trained me, this shot right there from Shaw. A more aggressive Shaw drilled De Weshko with a right hand that backs him in the corner. Now he's got a chip away at Joey DeVeco here in round six. It's about that time. And he lands enough power punches to convince the West Coast team he's taken enough punishment. The show me stay right, so I'm telling him, I'm telling <laughs> Shaw, show me something, baby. He just showed the end of this line. Don't let him make go the distance. Ali Aaron DeMizeran versus Gerald Washington, January 1st. Ali Aaron DeMizeran, he claims victory against Gerald Washington, and it's in Hollywood, Florida on New Year's Day, 2022. Early in round eight, DeMizeran unleashed a sharp straight right hand that immediately appeared to hurt Washington, who began to wobble to avoid a follow-up attack with his puffy face. Victor Faust versus Iago Collades, January 1st. Uses Faust knocked his opponent down many times in less than two rounds into the fight. Here's the right hand that uh, you know, Faust is known for, and then he threw that left hook. Just Finally, Faust's brutal left hook catches Collades' face, sending him back to the floor with a numb expression. Collades got up on wobbly jello legs and wanted to go. However, referee Samuel Burgos stops the fight at 144 of round two. Nathan Gorman versus Thomas Salek, June 17th. They're underway. Nathan Gorman rounds it as Richie talked about carrying. Gorman dominated the troubled Czech heavyweight right from the offset. Shows the left hook off that jump from Gorman. Yeah, really good start goes. He clubbed Salek whenever he got the chance. Gorman kicked off a left hook that kept Salek's head down. Good body shot went in as well. I think that slowed him down, but he's really pulling on the pressure. Followed by a violent uppercut and left hook, putting his opponent down barely a minute into the match. Shane for that fight against Daniel Dubois, mentioning with what was going on. Left hook, right hand from Gorman. Great is Lucas Brown versus Junior Fay, June 5th. The Australian nails Faye with a big right hand early in the first round, which left the Kiwi in the wrong way. Then Brown lunged forward and threw a big overhand right that dropped Faye right in the corner with a numb look. Faye got up, but he was in serious trouble. Clear his hand. Oh! There it comes again! A thunderous! He attempted to hold on and ride it out to get the facilities back, but he just couldn't. Zan Kasobutsky versus Johan Duopas, May 21st. He focused all of his attention on his opponent's top section, then unleashed two sharp right hand stabs, stunning his opponent. Right after that, a body shot catches to Hoppus in the stomach, sending him to the floor with a blank expression on his face. Daniel Dubois versus Trevor Bryan, June 11th. Daniel Dubois knocks out Trevor Bryan in the fourth round on Saturday night in Miami to claim the WBA regular heavyweight belt. Well, one thing I've noticed here, there's a good shot already with Dubois. That's another good right hand that gets it over there. In the fourth round, Dubois had little to fear and pushed his assault further. After a devastating left hook sent Brian stumbling into the ropes. Still 20 seconds left here. Puts. Not long later, Dubois lands a third big left hook, which proved to be the fight's final punch. 
sending Brian crashing face down to the canvas with the referee waving off the match. Yeah, it's, 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 that's lovely. It's a great shot by Dubois that has... is Simon Keane versus Shondell Winters, February 19th. From the outset, Keane overpowered aggressively, causing Winters to lean back on the ropes. Keane then delivers three consecutive left jabs to the face, followed by a right hand punch, leaving his opponent dumbfounded and defenseless. Anthony Joshua versus Michael Sprott. Anthony Joshua needed less than 90 seconds to blast out veteran Michael Sprott. The Olympic champion has made a blistering start with consecutive and devastating punches, spinning his opponent on the rope. Then he unleashed a series of wild punches to his opponent's face and head, forcing the referee to step in and stop the fight. Anthony Joshua! Luis Ortiz versus Byron Poli. After a nine month suspension, Ortiz has stopped American Byron Poli. Ortiz at a fiery match. wins in first round TKO with a series of wild right hand jabs. Deontay Wilder versus Dominic Brazil. Wilder is blowing Brazil out in round one to retain his WBC belt. A right hand wobbles the mandatory challenger and forces him to the corner. The Bronze Bomber sets up Brazil with a short left hook before landing a big right, putting him clattering to the canvas. Marat Gassiv versus Nuri Safari. Former champion Gassiv makes his heavyweight debut against Nuri Safari. see landing a pushing jab to the glow of Safari and then adds a short left hook and a massive right. <laughs> Referee Arakli Malzoni waves the fight off. Iran! Marat Gassiv versus Jordan Schimmel. This time it's Gassiv landing the devastating first round knockout with Jordan Schimmel. Gassiv finished the foe with a flush left hook to the chin and put him out cold. The fight is stopped at 2.52 with medical attention urgently called for. Nathan Gorman versus Thomas Selick. Nathan Gorman stops Thomas Selick within 80 seconds of the first round. Gorman began the combination of two devastating jabs and a series of wild punches. A chopping right to the temple down Selick, and then he's down again moments later. And the fight is stopped within the first half of the first round. Nathan Gorman! Lucas Brown versus Junior Fay. Brown silences his critics with a fast and vast knockout victory over Junior Fay. Australian nailed Fa with a big right hand in the left temple early in the round, which left Junior in a bad way. But the referee didn't immediately stop the fight, but Brown got the job done just a few seconds later. Fighting out of the blue corner, Big Daddy Lucas Brown! Deontay Wilder versus Bermain Stavern. Wilder crushes Stavern three times in less than a round.
frustrated bronze bomber knocked down Stavern halfway through round one with a sharp jab. And he knocks him down again with a left and right combo. He then finishes the fight with a vicious left. And with a second left, the referee has to rush in and stop the match. Those are oh, no, right in the top. Oh, no. And what great place. Brooklyn, baby, what's up, baby? Ryan Garcia and Francisco Fonesca. Garcia almost finished the fight in the opening 30 seconds when he stunned Fonesca with a big left hook. After clipping him with a few more left hooks, all Garcia was looking for was the opening to put him away. With a huge left hook that sent Fonesca out. Kid is a superstar. He did the exact same thing he did to Romero Duno. One round, he's out. Ryan Garcia and Romero Duno. The prospect star Garcia impressively knocks out Romero Duno in the first round. He lands a thudding straight right, right through Duno's guard and staggers him. Garcia stayed composed and lands another right, followed by a glazing left hook. The prospect star knocked down Duno with perfectly placed right hand to the temple. Ryan Garcia! Nayoya Eno versus Juan Carlos Piano. Eno lives up to his nickname with a devastating knockout of Juan Carlos Piana in the opening round. The monster took just over a minute to flatten his opponent with a straight left followed by a vicious right hook, putting him flat on his back in front of the expectant crowd at the Yokohama Arena, Yokohama, Japan. Naoya, the monster! Daniel Jacobs versus Peter Quillen. Jacobs beats Quillen by TKO in the first round. Jacobs lands a big right hand and catches Quillen flush on the temple and really rocks him. Jacobs is then attempting to finish the fight, landing non-stop combinations the whole round. referee saw that Quillen was highly disoriented and waves the fight off with no complaint from Quillen. And that's a huge left from Pavlovich. He's out. He's out. Johnny Gonzalez and Abner Mares. None of that mattered with just less than 40 seconds to go in the opening round when Gonzalez lands a beautiful left hook and puts Mars down. With a right hand and now the champion rose and attempted to get through what remained of the round, but he was floored and in a subsequent flurry and instead saw his opportunity waved off by referee Jack Reese with five seconds left to go. First, it's Gennady Golovkin versus Lawan Simon. Golovkin was still a nightmare when he faced the durable Simon for the vacant IBO middleweight title in Germany. Simon heading into the match and had never been stopped while Golovkin had feasted on a steady diet of overseas unknowns. The left hand he lands on Simon brought him his first full-fledged title belt. Oba. Juan Manuel Lopez versus Daniel Ponce de Leon. At 
anyone only seen the first 90 seconds of the fight, they might have thought it was an initially tentative Lopez who was taken out early. A long overhand left changed that approach when it drops Ponce de Leon and a follow-up flurry sends him down, promoting a stop from referee Mike Ortega. Mike Tyson and Michael Spinks. Going Spinks was undefeated and viewed as a clever technician in the ring. However, Tyson had incredible power, and he was more than willing to put that characteristic on display. Tyson quickly disposed of his opponent with a series of punches that appeared to destroy Spinks' will to compete. Spinks was never the same fighter after this bout. Next is Juan Carlos Salgado versus Jorge Linares. Rather than escaping with a second defense of his second weight class championship, the streaking 24-year-old Linares was dropped twice en route to a TKO loss in just 73 seconds of what turned out to be one of the year's top championship level upsets. Deontay Wilder versus Sergei Lyakovic. Wilder did nothing to curb enthusiasm in a fight from Indio, California, where he reduced former WBO heavyweight champion Sergei Lyakovic to an on canvas convulsion after landing a pair of punishing straight rights at the midway point of round one. Paul Williams and Carlos Quintana. Quintana out of his comfort zone. He staggered the defending champion, Carlos Quintana, with a right hand just past the halfway mark of the round and dropped him soon after, and then followed up with a flurry that drew the stoppage from referee Eddie Claudio after just 135 seconds of in-ring combat. It was the last championship fight victory of Williams' career, which was cut short by a motorcycle accident that left him unable to walk. Danny Green and Roy Jones Jr. Jones Jr. The challenge. Green holding center. Looking for an eyepiece. Danny's going to make. Green was apparently unmoved and started Jones toward his third career stoppage loss with a big overhand right just before the midway point of the round, putting the challenger on the floor. Green follows up with dozens of punches that went unanswered from Jones, prompting referee Howard John Foster to step in and end the fight at 2.02. Adonis Stevenson and Chad Dawson. Stevenson turned the light heavyweight division on its ear and dropped WBC light heavyweight champion Chad Dawson on his back with a single overhead left just more than a minute into the anticipated match at the Bell Central in Montreal. Two of course. 
Dawson tumbled to the canvas before gamely rising, but he was in no condition to continue and had his reign officially waved off by referee Michael Griffin at 116. And all of Stevenson's face, bang, bang on the chin, and the way he collapsed to the unsteady, that there was no urgency. Kendall Holt and Ricardo Torres. Championship of the, world. Oh, the rematch got down to business right away with Torres dropping his man in the first 15 seconds and again at the 40 second mark. Coming right back, left hand lands. Torres bearing in, trying to end Holt was undaunted, however, and as Torres pressed him against the ropes during a follow up, he lands a whistling right hand that soon left the champion sagging. Referee Jay Nady stopped the fight after getting less than halfway through his count. Torres is still out. His leg is twitching up. Chisora and Dylan White. Chisora has always been an extravagant challenger. Reacting to verbal threats from White, everywhere I see you for the rest of my life, I'm going to attack you even after the fight. I am the baddest man. Chisora's patience just snapped, adding throwing a table to the catalog of incidents involving the unpredictable Chisora. You're a that. goat. I got yeah. more than so that. you want me to put it on you? I'll put it on you. And that result was exactly the opposite of what he showed. Dylan White delivered a brutal 11th round knockout of Derek Chisor with a crushing left to the jaw. Joe Harding versus Johan Siga. There's always something satisfactory in seeing Hoobers treated with such casual disdain. It was a crazy reason for Joe Harding's knockout loss in the Johan Sega fight. Waiting for Joe to do something. Harding decided to offer the audience a dance move, which he was looking away from his opponent, and it provoked him. Jab to follow it up. Again with the jab. Oh! Yes! Segus dived in on the opportunity and fired a high kick to the cocky fighter's jaw, knocking him out cold. Yep. Oh! Then... Yes! After the kick to the head and repeated punches to the face, Harding was brutally knocked out, so he has to have an extensive medical check while in the cage. But fortunately, he was able to leave the ring just a lot more red-faced. Broilo Rodriguez versus Ryan Garcia. As they held a face-off at the weigh-in, Rodriguez made remarks at Garcia. Rodriguez turned up the heat and shoved Garcia, causing him to bump his back against a model. <laughs> Rodriguez then gestured his hand across the throat at Garcia, and they had to be held away from one another. But on fight night, Garcia scored a knockdown in the first round with a right hand and a left hook, but Rodriguez survived the count. For one of the announcing teams, good hook, and Rodriguez goes down. Left him with the count, did he make it? Lipton's gonna make him step forward. Two rights follow a left uppercut, and that set up the knockout blow. A left hook, putting Rodriguez on the canvas. Looking up at the lights of Madison Square Garden as Garcia's sizable fan base cheered him on. It's KSI versus Logan Paul II. Before the match, KSI claimed he wanted to kill his opponent, Logan Paul. It's 81, you fucking morons. <laughs> the pair met in the boxing ring as professionals for the first time and traded insults for months, both online and face to face. And now this time it's over for him. You can't fight either. You, oh, you don't know anything about boxing. I'm gonna give you five minutes so you can There's the uppercut that sent him down. Wild sequence that round started when Paul landed a big uppercut, sending KSI crashing down to the canvas. Stevenson versus Williams Jr. Williams had provocative and defiant action against Stevenson. However, things didn't turn out the way he wanted. To see the count, it will be over. 
For Stevenson, after punishing Williams with body shots and uppercuts in previous rounds, he finished off the challenger with a crushing left cross at the end of round four. Make him miss. Right oh, yeah. oh. Frank Sanchez versus Fernandez. It's the fifth round and Fernandez, despite receiving lots of punches to the face, was stubborn and provoked his opponent. Kubrat Pulov, who's the number 10, there's a hard right hand by Sanchez. I think Sanchez. He challenged his opponent by waving, jerking his jaw and using his hand to rest on his cheek, pretending he's not in pain and if he wanted to tell his opponent to rush at him. Bring it on, showing the toughness. Well, Frank, let's see it. A right hand from Sanchez sent Fernandez wobbling backward before the Cuban flash followed up with the same ferocious punch that dropped the opponent heavily on his back. And finally, a furious finish, sending Fernandez out of the ring. Out of the ring goes Fernandez and this fight. Dustin Poirier versus Bobby Green. Beautiful leg kick early, trains an American top team. Green taunts Poirier with provocative teasing action. Green's doing his best to duck and dodge, but he is dropped badly. Continuous punches to the face had the referee with no choice but to stop the bout. Greg Jackson versus Cornelius Whitlock. Whitlock unleashed some hard combinations from the outside that nearly knocked Jackson down. He hastily celebrated his victory with a wriggle dance. Despite having that great athletic ability, yet again Whitlock remains a little flat-footed in spurts and that was his demise in the fight. Range in from Jackson as he's on the attack. For Jackson, he showed the ability to recover from the devastating shot and maintain a game plan the very next round. He stops Whitlock in an intelligent manner with a series of consecutive punches to the face, causing Whitlock's lips to prominently pout. Felix Verdejo versus Sergio Villanueva. Before being knocked out, Villanueva was very complacent with a cocky face and wide eyes to challenge his opponent. But what he did was a complete opposite that shone up on his face. Verdejo was able to counter with a well-timed right hook, snapping Villanueva's head back. Villanueva instantly was frozen and then fell face first to the canvas with the upper part of his body landing on the bottom rope. Villanueva quarreled to get up, prompting referee Frank Santori to stop the fight at 157 of the round. Ginky Sudo versus Dwayne Ludwig. Ginky Sudo confused Dwayne Ludwig with his extremely weird dance. Sudo's fancy footwork wasn't all for show either. He could really fight and throw a wide array of unusual moves that led to victory against more technical sound strikers. A few moments later. Ginky Sudo absolutely baffled Dwayne Ludwig before being victim to one robbery, consecutive punches to the face like Ludwig's counterattack for Sudo. Well, it made him unable to get up. Ahmed Dib versus Denapa Big Shot Camp. Big Shot Camp entered the ring for his bout against Ahmed Dib on the back of a seven bout losing streak. And he's not off to the greatest start in this one either. But look at him, here he goes, vaulting over the ropes. It went comically wrong. A big Shot Camp. <laughs> During the match, he also often takes action to challenge his opponent, nods and waves of his hands used by him as weapons to provoke his opponent. However, taunting others usually does not ever have a good ending. 
and his reward, a brutal knockout from his opponent. Why he's doing that? Yeah, that was low. I find it always. That's a big victory. Sabri Sadiri versus Sam Maxwell. In the final minute of the 10th round, he was so confident he was touting Maxwell, dancing around him, and putting his hands behind his back. Maxwell looked woozy, like he's waiting for the bell to ring so he could collapse. But looks can be deceiving. While Sadiri celebrated the win he was certainly about to earn, Maxwell took advantage and knocked him off his cocky perch, literally. Bring it on. Come on. Showing the toughness. Well, Frank, let's see it. Out of the ring goes Fernandez, and this fight is now... Centino Jr. versus Paul Maxez Selecki. Centino Jr. managed to take all his anger out in this fight with Selecki back in June of 2016. When he tried to land a big right on the opponent and suddenly he missed. The referee tried to split them apart, but he receives a painful punch. Oh, another knockdown! Rose Nama, you are trying to close the show! She was doing it for oh, Martinez versus Josh Warrington, two. Somehow, success for Martinez, but Warrington responds. It's built to be exactly what we want to see. Is this going to be a was that the last attempt by Martinez? He's covering up on the ropes here now. Josh Warrington is the new IBF World Featherweight Champion after stopping Kiko Martinez in round seven in front of a sold-out crowd in Leeds. Warrington began to find his speed and power in round seven after being subjected to some Martinez body shots in the sixth. And Martinez is having to cover up on the ropes here, and he isn't firing back after a solid shot. And this crowd going wild here. Rocking Martinez early on, Warrington unleashed another barrage of quick combinations. He then blocked up Martinez onto the ropes and unloaded before the referee ended the contest. Sensational first round finish. Half a minute for Martinez here to survive. These are heavy shots. First up, Jermail Charlo and Brian Castano too. Looking to walk him down, Castaño going to the body, and then Castaño landing the sneaky right hand of Castaño, and it's proving to be that early. Yeah, he's got a better hand. In round 10, the left hook finally came as Charlo lands the shot that led Castaño to hit the canvas on a delayed knockdown. While Castaño beat the count, Charlo stormed forward with a fight finishing flurry, ending on an uppercut and left hook to the body. What about the defensive uh, side from oh, Charlo? Combination by Castaño. Oh, nice right, nice right hand. Oh, and Stop. cheered by Charlo again, clipped him with the right and the left, standing his ground. But has the fight closes out a two fight rivalry. We saw both men show tremendous heart and skills, but ends with Charlo as the man holding four world championships at 154 pounds. And there he doubles up and stopping him with a, what was really done. For the first time, with some head movement. He was cool. Let's see if that makes Alexander Usyk and Anthony Joshua, too. Usyk firing back. In round nine, Joshua battered Usyk around the ring, seemingly stunning the champion multiple times throughout the round. However, Usyk stays on his feet and shows true championship qualities in the final three rounds of the fight. As Joshua now in pursuit. Usyk. Beginning in round 10, Usyk tags Joshua with heavy shots multiple times. Joshua's lower stance disappears, and he begins to fight with straight up slow legs, and Usyk takes over and ensures a well-deserved victory. Usyk has the tendency, whenever you have a good round, of a left hand down. Lee Wood versus Michael Conley. And he's having some he Conley here could be the end of this fight. Wood needs to hold on and just keep out of the way. Wood produces a stunning comeback win to halt Michael Conlon, 
with a brutal knockout and retain his WBA regular world featherweight title. Featherweight title in this sizzling atmosphere. At the start of the 12th round, Wood launches a ferocious, relentless attack, which leaves Conlon out on his feet before the Irishman collapses through the ropes, falling backwards out of the ring. Good for sliding, keeping his chin out of danger, then Anton back. The judges will see that now scoring, but soaking up too many left crosses. Back comes Lee Wood again. Five. This level of courage, this level of resistance as Lee Wood. Connor Benn versus Chris Van Heerden. There's that overhand right from McCarthy. He's tired, he's found his time a bit better in this round. Benn blasted Van Heerden in two rounds in front of a boisterous Manchester crowd. At the start of round two, a well-timed right hand hurts Van Heerden, and it's obvious he won't recover. He is open here. Is he beginning to really... Then continues the attack and manages to floor Van Heerden with the third man halfway through his count. He decided to call things off as Ben wildly celebrated. Sebastian Fondora and Erickson Levin. Sebastian Fondora had dazzled with his height in this fight with Erickson Levin in Las Vegas. They call him the Towering Inferno. He can throw punches from seemingly every angle. He's feeling it. Lubin is stunned. In this fierce clash, it saw both boxers hit the canvas. Fondora prevailed when Lubin's trainer, Kevin Cunningham, stopped the bout in round nine due to Lubin's grotesquely swollen face. Performance by Lubin in an answer. And it's for Lubin. Oh my goodness. David Avanison and Oscari Metz. Avanison blasted the Finland-based fighter to the canvas midway through the opening stanza, and there was no way back. Metz tried desperately to hold and buy time, but his equilibrium was shot, and he was helpless. The referee initiated a standing count when Avanison was midway through his second assault, calling a halt to the slaughter. The official time was at two minutes. He's gonna go here. Alexis Roca versus Blair Cobbs. Sometimes the opponent's off with the weights. Roca was in an entertaining action fight with Cobbs. Cobbs started the fight well, mostly matching with Roca with combinations and power shots, but. 10 round. Nice straight left by Rocha. Rocha just missed with that left hand. That was a big left hand. Roca would eventually level Cobbs with a nice right uppercut in round eight. And with Cobbs on shaky, wobbly legs, he was finally finished off with a lengthy flurry in round nine. The official stoppage comes at the 44 second mark in the ninth. The straight left, and that's exactly what's happening, and he's lining them more and more. And the pendulum swings. And Rocha with the body shots. I want to see more body shots from Rocha. Carol Spence and Jordina Suga. In the opening minute of the eighth, and Spence left hand over the breaking his momentum. Spence unifies the WBC and IBF titles with the WBA belt from Jordina Sugas. He's a tough man to deal with, and that's who he's doing right now. And right there is who you know. Distance looking to land the uppercut. And uh, he hopes that that pays dividends. With a thrilling TKO in Arlington, Texas. By the 10th round, Spence stormed to hurt Yugas repeatedly to the body and eye. Yugas' right eye was completely shut, and referee Lawrence Cole stops the bout at 144 into the 10th round. That I'm liking right now. Yeah. To the ire of Derek James would say, Spence isn't the same since the car accident. Mm -hmm. And now, of course, coming back from the has simply not thrown a lot of punch of note because he's not, he's, he's dormant. Natty Golovkin and Ryota Murata. Absolutely, yeah, and, and part of the reason I enjoy Triple G style, the big drama show. Triple G, kind of the, the classic. Golovkin lands a right hand that spelted the end for Murata. Despite his best effort to stay in the fight, another backhand rushed over and floors Murata. Murata's uh, Ryota's not giving Triple G. And the towel sensibly flies in from the corner with the match ending at two minutes, 11 seconds. Mm, there's that Good left hook from Golovkin, a slight step back from Murata. 
Savannah Marshall versus Fimke Hermans. Savannah Marshall stops Fimke Herman to defend her WBO middleweight belt at Newcastle Utilita Arena. Marshall unloads a huge left hook, sending Herman's toppling to the canvas in the closing seconds of the third round. The referee had seen enough and swiftly waves it off. Versus Whitaker. During the fight's first round, both Pannon and Whitaker hurled left-handed uppercuts that landed with such simultaneous aplomb on each other's chins that it rocked their heads backward. This yields a double knockout in which both fighters hit the canvas and are counted out. That's the stuff of movies. Jorge Cota versus Yoelvis Gomez. Veteran referee Wes Melton is stepping in to separate the fighters. But Cota, under the pressure of battle, unleashes a final right hook and he clocks Melton right in the chest. Victor Faust and Iago collides. There were five knockdowns in this thrilling contest, and in a brutal second round moment, collides hit the mat after the fifth knockdown. The fight should have been able to continue, but referee Samuel Burgos, however, waves off the contest. This made Killad's furious, and he threw out a soft right hand and connects with the referee's chin. Deontay Wilder and Sirhey Lakovic, the bronze bomber, catches him with a brutal right that forces him to the ropes. Then Wilder unleashes a ferocious right hand, landing on the 43-year-old's left temple, sending him crashing to the canvas. Lakovic was left convulsing on the floor as he lost control of his legs and his arms. Trying to close the show. She was doing a great job of feet. That's that is it. Over. Oh, oh, no. Carl Frock and George Groves. Having seized control of the bout, Frock continued to attack Groves' body midway through the fight, landing a slew of damaging shots. A confident Frock lets a vicious right hand fly in the eighth, and he sends Groves to the ropes in a heap. Referee rushes over to the 26-year-old and quickly waves off the fight. Oh, no! Rose Lama, you are trying to close the show! She was doing a great job of feet! That is it! Rose Lama, Rose! Saul Alvarez and Amir Khan. Khan boxed well early on before getting caught clean by a picture-perfect overhand right and assuming the position. Round was only 30 seconds in, and Alvarez hit his right hand hook right on the chin, knocking his opponent unconscious right there in the ring. Champion of the world, Simone Canelo Alvarez. Deontay Wilder versus Bermain Stavern 2. Wilder flattened the Haitian Canadian with a straight right hand within the first round. He skids across the ring and finds out there was only 10 seconds left in the round and pummeled his foe with one final combination. <music> Referee Arthur McCanty Jr. attempted to pull Wilder away, but ended up being ragdolled by the furious heavyweight champion. Deontay Wilder! And what great place! Brooklyn, baby, what's up, baby? 
Manny Pacquiao versus Ricky Hatton. Manny Pacquiao defeated Hatton via a second round knockout. A six minute beating preceded the Pac-Man nailing the Hitman with a pinpoint left hand. Doctors did rush out to attend to the dazed hat. Pac-Man! Hey, Derek Jefferson and Maurice Harris. What kind of punch sends a trained heavyweight's gum shield flying out of his mouth and into orbit? These 90s contenders were having a nice civilized slugfest when Jefferson unleashed this big left hook from the depths of hell. Sergio Martinez versus Paul Williams. Martinez's right hand bomb blindsides Williams, and the American goes face first to the canvas. Rather unnecessarily, the referee counted to 10 right in Williams' face despite the nobody's home sign. The Virgil versus Fenderson. The Virgil connected with a strong right hook in the third round as Fenderson retreats to the ropes, sending the American plummeting to the mat. However, at almost exactly the same time, Fenderson lands a shovel uppercut to DeVergil, sending the Cuban sprawling to the ropes and onto his back. Two fighters here in India. Both fighters are hurling wild shots and then land at the same time to each other's face, and both hit the floor simultaneously. Both men took almost 25 seconds to get back to their feet as the referee held his hands up. Watch this Japanese referee get googly-eyed from a monstrous left hook. As one fighter digs his head into his opponent, he unleashes this monstrous hook. But unfortunately, it lands right on the referee's noggin and sends him to dreamland. 